I was up till about two in the morning last night, getting this thing all ready for you today. And bro, we have one heck of an electrical system now. We've got our blinkers hooked up, all my switches work, starter's gonna work, brake lights are gonna work, and I'm excited. Welcome back to another Tyrannus Tip. This week, we're gonna be talking about our blinker system. And I know what you're thinking, Vertical video, what is this? Trust me, it'll make sense later. Basically, our blinker system here on this cart is a little more complex than average. I wanna walk you guys around, show you one more time how everything works. And I've gone ahead and drawn up three different wiring diagrams for a very basic level blinker system that you could easily implement on your cart. A system that's a little bit more intermediate that incorporates the tail lights like we have and a more advanced system that represents the exact wiring system that we have here on this red cart. That being that we have our turn signals built into the front lights and I also can control them on their own switch. That adds some complexity. We're gonna be talking about diodes, a lot of cool stuff. But like I said, first things first, I just wanna walk you guys around, show you this, then we'll start easy and work our way up. Sound good? All right, bet. All right, so first things first, let's just get a good look at this electrical system that we're running. We did four videos dedicated to this system on the red cart. You get to see me basically design, work through, and figure out exactly how I wanted all this to work. And now we've got it locked in pretty good. And let's take a look at those blinkers. The first and most important thing you're gonna need is gonna be one of these. This is a flasher relay. Everything I talk about, I'll link to in the description of this video, but so the flasher relay is what gives us the actual blinking for our turn signals. The way that our system works is first, you gotta turn on power to the entire system. And now with power on, the power gets fed into this fuse box. All of our circuits are fused. Power will be fed to the flasher relay. So the flasher relay is hot as soon as you turn on auxiliary power and then comes out of the flasher and splits to our two individual buttons here on either side and those turn on our blinkers and basically what happens then is if I turn on my right blinker power is going to come all the way over to this terminal right here and then from here it gets fed to the right ring light which you can see blinking here and also to our right tail light same thing happens over here we can shut this one off turn the other one on you can see there's our left blinker, left blinker. And this time, instead, power's coming from the battery, running through our fuse box into the flasher relay. And this time goes from the flasher relay to our left blinker switch. And the left blinker switch feeds to right here. And then this feeds both this ring light up front and that tail light back there. Now, the reason I say that our system is a little more complex than what I'm gonna show you at first is because we have these integrated so that I can also go in here and turn on just those ring lights as running lights, which look really cool. And then also, our tail lights are also running lights. And in addition to that, when you step on the brakes, both of these lights will light up bright. So in order to use our system, you're gonna need some diodes, you're gonna need a little bit of intricacy with your wiring and it gets a little messy but like I said we're gonna start nice and easy show you guys how to just add standalone blinkers to your build then I'll show you how to add front blinkers and rear tail lights like ours and then I'll show you exactly how I wired ours up now I've been thinking hard about what the best way to do this is and I've drawn up some really nice schematics for you guys so we're gonna go up to my computer and I'll run you guys down my wiring diagrams, which I'll also upload for y'all for free on our website, www.tyrannuscustoms.com. Um, those will be free for download. But without further ado, let's go check it out. All right. So we're up at the computer, out of the garage. Let's take a look at these wiring diagrams I put together for y'all. First one right here, this is just the most basic blinker wiring setup uh, that I could come up with. So for a system like this, You'll just be attaching four dedicated turn signals, as you see here. 
This is the front of our vehicle. This is the rear of our vehicle. You can see we've got our battery is right here, which is grounded to the chassis. And then each of our individual blinkers is also grounded to the chassis. And it's pretty simple. Your battery, we have our positive lead comes out. We fuse our circuit, because we're good boys and girls. Goes into our flasher relay. From our flasher relay, at this point, once you're in the flasher relay, the power that comes out the other side of that is going to be your blinking power, is what I'll call it. You're already getting that flashing on off, on off blinker action. And then from there, it's gonna come down and we go and feed that power to both our left and right turn signal switch. And so when you go ahead and you press that button and close this circuit, you're gonna give power to not only the front right turn signal, but also the rear right turn signal. And then if you close the left turn signal switch, power can then get to the front left turn signal as well as the rear left turn signal. And that's really it. Again, super simple. Nice and easy, and something you should be able to implement in, on your cart if you so choose. If you want to go one step further, we come to here. This incorporates the brake lights. Uh, the style of brake lights that we use have a running light, which I'm showing with this lamp right here and right here. And then there's also the braking and turn signal lights up a second light that is much brighter. And this is slightly simplified, but it gets the same point across. You'll see that if we follow it through from the beginning, it's kind of the same thing. Our batteries grab to the chassis. We go through, here I have a power switch because now we have running lights and we need to be able to kill the power to these running lights so that they're not on all the time. So I put a power switch right here. So nothing's gonna happen until you actuate one of these sw switches to turn on the blinkers. However, as soon as you turn on your power switch, Power can come up through here and go over to our running light, power our running light. Again, you can see grounded to the chassis. And it can also come across here and power our other running light. Again, grounded to the chassis. Anywhere that you see these little bumps is just showing that the wires are crossing over one another. They're not actually connected. So, so far, we've got our power switch on and that's feeding power to both of our running lights. But now let's say we want to step on the brakes. Here is our spring switch. And on our cart, it's installed just behind the driver's seat. You can see that in that electrical series like we talked about. And this is where it gets a little bit trickier. So you wanna be able to turn on both taillights at the same time, which we're also using as blinkers. So in order to connect all of these circuits and not have any kind of back feeding issues, we're going to have to use some diodes. Now this right here is a diode. And what's really nice about the sort of schematic uh, diagram of a diode is it shows you which direction it's going to allow electricity to flow. So this diode is only going to allow electricity to flow from here this way through. It won't back feed the opposite direction. So we've got one diode here allowing power to flow this way, but not back. Another diode here, allowing again power to flow from our spring switch this way, but not back. And that'll become important later. So here, we can go ahead and when we press our spring switch down, power comes through, lights up both of our brake light slash turn signals in the bright position, and we've got braking. But we also have to be careful because when you go to do that, if you don't have a diode right here, that electricity is going to be able to back feed as you press the brakes, not only light up the brake lights, but also back feed and light up our front turn signals as well. And so turn those on with the brakes and you don't want that. So that's why we're going to need a diode right here in this orientation. So with this diode in place, what that's going to allow us to do is when we come over here and we turn on our left turn signal, let's say. That's going to give power to our front left turn signal. That's completely fine. And that power is gonna to have to come all the way back here. It's gonna run through our diode and up and turn on that rear brake light. But if we didn't have this diode here, it would also back feed over and across and turn on the right turn signal. This is, it's tricky to say, 
and it takes a little while to get your head around it, but you can literally do what I'm doing here with your finger or your cursor and just kind of trace this stuff out and realize, oh, okay, as that left turn signal turns on, yep, we're gonna get power here, that looks good. I've also been careful that all of my arrows line up and show you the proper flow of electricity. And so from here, it's gonna go through, allow our right turn signal to blink, but also is gonna be stopped by this diode from back feeding over and blinking the wrong ones. So this is what I would consider a sort of intermediate difficulty blinker setup because as you can see, there's some added complexity. We now have to use some diodes, but it gets us to where we wanna be. If you want the exact setup as I have on my red cart, things get a little bit trickier. So this is the red cart's wiring. It's almost the same. The only difference here is that we've got one extra uh, switch involved in our circuit. So we've got our power switch, which runs down to both our spring switch for our brakes, just like last time, and to our flash relay and then to both turn signal switches, just like last time. But now it also runs over to a specific switch that will turn on both ring lights and the way that it does that is power comes down here splits in both directions there's a diode on each side of the split just like up here for our brakes so you'll notice this is essentially the exact same concept as i used to incorporate the brake pedal switch we're using the same thing for our ring lights so here it comes out diode keeps it from back feeding but it'll go all the way over to our ring light and turn on both ring lights. And I've got a diode in between the path that connects our front right turn signal and our rear turn signal. That way, the only way that you're gonna be able to turn on both at once is going to be using this right turn signal. So again, this is the exact same way that I set up our brake lights. I did the same thing for our ring lights so I could turn those on with their very own switch and use them as running lights. Big takeaways here are just got to understand that diodes electricity can only flow in the direction of the little arrow and once you know that and kind of get your head around it even though this looks a little crazy not too hard to put together not too hard to execute now you've got a couple options you got the easy first option with just four dedicated blinkers easiest way to do it doesn't get any simpler should be pretty easy to follow step up one you add your tail lights with and use that second brightness setting as your flashers as well adds a little complexity still doable and then if you want to run something just like we have with the exact same lights and you want to be able to control your ring lights gosh darn it you got yourself the wiring diagram to do that as well so like i said i'm going to upload all three of these to our website transcustoms.com That'll be there for you if you want to use it. Also, the reason that I shot this video in a vertical format is I figure you probably walk around the shop with your phone. You can just pause the video and use it as a reference just like that on any one of these wiring diagrams if you want to check your own setup. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit that notification bell for our buddy Trey and we'll catch you in the next one.